everybody what's going on so welcome to my review of one piece chapter 1064 and boy did Oda tease us with another tease after another tease in this chapter let's begin with the cover story and automatically it caught my attention because this is the first cover story that actually ties in with the actual chapter i don't i can't remember the last time that's happened but it starts off with gene bar and kuzan aka aokg so we haven't seen him since punk hazard he's back and it's affiliated with the Blackbeard Pirates from what we learned in Dressrosa. And it looks like they're the ones that captured Pudding, which can't, can't disheartens me a little bit because I was under the assumption that maybe it was the Vince Smokes have that moment with Radio and Pudding. No, Oda's look, really looking to amp up the pacing and get things rolling with the final saga. So, so the Blackbeard Pirates are the ones that Pudding captured. Again, that's another scenario I did call for. Because of Pudding being a member of the Three-Eyed Tribe has not fully awakened, but once she does awaken that ability, she can read the raw Poneglyphs. So is that clarification that Teach himself cannot read the Poneglyph? Because why else would why else would they capture Pudding at this point? So speaking of Blackbeard, he's clashing with Law at the beginning of this chapter, so that's a good way to amp up the pacing in this chapter. So Law looks like he he uses amputation amputate on the unicorn, I guess, stronger. The horse unicorn that's about to die because obviously he can't hold the weight of Blackbeard. So Teach can no longer approach on air, so he has to fight Law on the ground. Teach uses his quake quake through to like keep Heart Pirates mobile, but then Doc Q throws a, I guess, a basket of apple bombs to like throw at the Heart Pirates. They end up, they end up countering it anyway. So I like the Heart Pirates again, a chance to shine as well as Law. And then anyway, Jean Bart tries to fire at Law, but tries to fire at Law, but it gets blocked. So that, meanwhile, Law uses his opportunity to use Kroom, his awakening version of his Devil Fruit, and actually attack Teach with Shark Willy, which is the same technique he used at Big Mom by stabbing her through the throat. And then Jean Bart actually says, "This is what happens when you ha you charge in half cut." So I'm guessing he's like, "Yo, you were half prepared for this." Teach was like, yo, when the hell did Law get this type of ability? So he didn't have intel on Law prior to this encounter. So, And if they did clash, uh, like I said, that may give Law the edge because of he's the smartest member of the worst generation. If he's clashed with Blackbeard before, he should know what's coming with Black Vortex. By the way, while this is going on, while the Blackbeard Pirates are trying to sink the, the Polar Tang, we see that Katarina, Devon, and it looks like Vasco Shot are guarding the... Well, the captured themselves but the guardian shall pudding has been captured interesting we don't see kuzon in the actual chapter we just saw him in the cover story so i guess that's Oda finally giving us kuzon without showcasing anything more why is he there we need an explanation as to what he's up a lot of people seem to think he's a double agent which i think that too because this goes against what kuzon's usually about it, putting out some interesting words so, some of them are more con contradictory because she says marlon's gonna make you eat those words if she's still alive you realize we're fighting a killer right now so obviously applying to law even though kid had a hand in that as well but new errors only happen when the old legends are torn down so teach uses this time his quick quick through against law's awakening groom and teach is about to use black vortex as it conveniently cuts to Marine HQ with uh, the Marines actually hacking in and finding out that teachers against law so they know and ironically it's on Winner Island so that's the island they're on right now the Marines know that they're clashing so I don't know if they're going to intervene that could be laws out if they do and maybe he gets captured similar to how Ace got captured because this is giving me Teach versus Ace vibes all over again. So, so I don't see Al Qaeda waiting too much longer. You know he wants to go right after Law. Anyway, it looks like the Straw Hats and Body are separated from the Pacifista police, the Kuma clone that was in the police outfit. Judy Bonnie has switched up the, the rages, so obviously they wouldn't be recognized because obviously they will stand out. Luffy's in a, been changed to a 70 year old man. I mean, we saw Chop raged in Wano, so that's nothing new. Jinbei actually looks younger, to be fair. But this is the interesting part where we get some intel about how apparently Kuma ran things as King of Sorbe. And it would make sense that Jinbei would know this since he was a former warlord himself, and we know Kuma was too, so he would know something about this. So he was known as a he was a tyrannical King of Sorbe before he was dis disposed by the people and forced to become a pirate. So that right there is a red flag. So it was disposed by his own people, 
Barney doesn't have a response just yet, but she's lo listening in. When he was eventually caught by the Navy, his ties to the revolutionaries came to light. So that's that's the reason, obviously, because he was connected with the revolutionaries and they gave him a life sentence. Vegapunk took an interest in him due to his physical prowess. So he was offered the opportunity to roam the seas as a warlord. So a Shishibukai he became. Barney picks up, a, she has an item that she picked up. I guess it was leftover items that Vegapunk's created, but it turns out to be a, a beam saber, a laser beam saber, saber. So that's actually pretty cool. But before then, I get why he chose to become a warlord, but she doesn't really specify and ma help make their clone soldiers. But why would he make knowingly agree to become a mindless cyborg? Anyone could see it's just as bad as a death sentence. And then that's where she, Barney fires the saber beam. Luffy is obviously impressed by anything that's te technology based. So obviously this is amazing to him. Even as a 70 year old man. But then that's where Barney switches their ages back to normal. Says, But Barney says that always used to say he was part of a very special race. So what him being different doesn't justify forcing him to be a lab rat. The fact that she says he's, he's part of a very special race. Now immediately people are going to jump the gun and say he's a part of the Lunarian race because we saw Akuma with Lunarian wings. Yes, but we also saw a Zephyrium that looked like Boa Hancock and Mihawk with Lunarian wings. So we don't know for sure. And on top of that, in the flashback where he's holding Lord Barney in the previous chapter, we see a full body shot. I do not see wings on him. So... And that will also imply that Jewelry Barney, if he is a Lunarian, is also part Lunarian as well. We have to get more info about that, but I like how Oda's giving us more tidbits about Kuma and, by default, Barney as well. But then he switches over to the rest of the Straw Hats, because we haven't seen them since Chapter 1062. And it looks like they're heading for the lab, which is up in the clouds, which obviously is vibed to Skype here, which is... Enhanced by Nami saying, the land that we're on takes me back to Skypiea because it floats just like Skypiea. Bug of Punk's like, yo, seeing as we can control the island's atmosphere and all, we can naturally make use of the, the power blow to, to alter the density of water vapor. So obviously clouds make them solid. So, because naturally, physically, that shouldn't be possible. So a similar thing with the that the Vegapunk Ulta was wearing, where she punched a hologram. That sh physically should be possible, but these gloves make it possible. Anyway, this is just part of the chapter where Zoro and Brook will get asked, hey, are you going to join us as well? But Zoro says, no, I'm going to keep guard of the ship. Now, which is, in theory, a smart move, because obviously in Wano, the, the ship got attacked. So on one hand, that's pretty cool, but I'm going to get into my reason why I think, I really think the reason why se Zoro is separated from the crew, along with Brook. The rest of the straw they they go to get a costume change. They go to a vendor machine to switch the outfits, and obviously Robin takes the cape wearer outfit, probably the best one. It reminds me of One Piece film Red, so that's pretty cool. I'm sure that's the intent of Oda. It's cool too because Frankie's getting a suit up, suit up as well, and it's it's funny because Sanji's the only one that has, he has a he has boots and he has a headset. He's, he has an earpiece, but he doesn't have the body. Because Vegapunk says, "I think I'll be dead soon," so. It looks like Vegapunk knows they're being targeted. So and Vegapunk also says, I said you to know about this dragon. So obviously she's going to say something about a dragon, but obviously that's the end of the chapter. So, But it's interesting that Zoro and Brooke says they're going to stay behind. Now they do have a convenient excuse with the to guard the Sunny, but in my opinion, I think it's because because we know Cyberpole are coming to, to target Vegapunk. And this, and like I said, Zoro is one of the prime candidates to actually defeat Rob Lucci alongside Luffy. So he can't be involved in this. So I can see this happening one of two ways. I, so I've got Brooke and Zoro end up clashing with the rest of the CP0 while the rest of the Straw Hats are on Vegapunk's island. Or the Straw Hats we see here with Frankie, Sanji, Usopp, Nami and Robin are the ones that are going to clash with CP0. I'd be fine with that. There's a lot of people that like to see Robin versus Rob Lucci. Oh, but I think the general consensus is we all want Robin to take partake in this fight if there is going to be a fight against CP0. It's been too long. She was restrained in Enos Lobby. It, that can't happen again. We're, entering, we're about to enter the final saga, so there needs to be some resolution to that, so why not? Now, I'm I'm just as fine with Robin fight, facing 
Stussy, but if Khalifa doesn't join them, that was an automatic rematch for Nami, but maybe Nami's the one to go up against Stussy. That'd be fine. Either way, it, just the straws we see here. Frankie Usopp definitely needed a chance to shine. Brooke as well, but he may get a, end up getting a Devil Fruit Awakening. So, Chopper's definitely going to get Awakening too at some point. So, that may be why he's with Luffy. I don't know if Luffy's going to have something to do with this fight with CP0. I have to wait and see. I hope this just doesn't lead to another Robin kid, kidnapping. I'll say that now. So, I'll have to wait and see. But, yeah, I'll, I'll be looking forward if it happens with Rob Lucci versus Nicole Robin. Sign me up. The interaction with Barney and Luffy, you can see it crystal clear as day where this is going. If, and Barney knows that B Kuma was a member of the revolutionary. So once they find out Kuma is with Dragon right now, that's going to tie up Barney to actually spill the beans of what happened with Sabo once the crew's re reunited. The question is, will a crew member be captured or will they all be together by the end of this arc? So that's going to do it for you guys. So much for watching. Like the review if you did it. Thumbs up. I appreciate that. Subscribe channel for more One Piece. Thank you guys for all the support. See you guys later. Thanks guys. Bye.